All right. Well, the first topic of discussion on today's show will be the Jaguars wide receiver situation with Mark Easley going down for the year. Such a bummer. Bit of a bummer there. We're all big fans of the Mark Easley. uh, Been on that train for a while. For sure. So, I mean, this was a situation no one really could make heads or tails of outside of Mark Easley, basically. Um, You kind of knew that Lee was the guy that you were sure that was not going to be taken off the field for this Jaguars team. Um, And you were very certain to really certain or however you want to phrase it that <laughs> he was going to get plenty of targets yeah um and then these we we had four here four guys of the jaguars that we were trying to jockey for position and figure out who was the guy to own and obviously lee going down is a huge bummer but now you're down to three typically those are the, around the amount of receivers that are out on the field um so i guess right now we're going to try to figure out which one is best to own right now what do you guys think? Make something of this situation. I I I've, I've I did a fair amount of digging in in uh, preparing for this show, and I, I really couldn't come up with a concrete, right, definitive answer of saying he's down. This is the next man up. Right, right. Well, I think the biggest thing about obviously the Jaguars are the the maybe the biggest in your face. We're the run first team offense of the league, so. Everybody, that was the biggest thing about the Jaguars passing court. You know, you get the ridiculously early draft pick of DJ Chark in the draft. You got Keelan yeah. Cole coming off of a really nice undrafted rookie free agent breakout season. D.D. Westbrook's, a, you know, an award-winning college wide receiver. And then Marquis Lee injured the first couple years of his career. Played through it. Could arguably a better receiver than Allen Robinson two years ago when they were both on the field. And then last year, obviously, Allison Rob- Allen Robinson goes down in the first quarter of the first game. Marquis Lee, you know, came returns great, great, you know, value for your pickup off the waivers or your late round pick. I know Casey and I got him in like 14th, 15th round in the startup in the FFPC last year. It was an integral part of our team. Uh, so yeah, like you had a bunch of wide receivers in a not necessarily prol- prolific passing offense with right. Bortles. Everybody likes to pick on Bortles in his passing. So now you take out the biggest main cog in that, and the and how do the targets redistribute right. is the biggest question. So there's 91 regular season targets uh, through 14 games for Marquise Lee. Those are up for grabs, obviously. And then uh, Alan Hearns left and went to um, Cowboys. The Cowboys. Uh, which is another 54 targets. I think he only played 10 games or All right, something so along those lines. So that's 145. 45 targets there. Uh, I do want to go back to the one point that you were making about how they're this run first team and not, aren't, aren't making any... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not making any... Mistake about it. Right. No. They're, they're, they're coming out and they want to run it at you. You're going to stack a box against them and do all these other things. Um, there were in... in 12 personnel, they're top three in the league. 27%, they're running 13 personnel, 291 plays out of their total plays for the year. So that's usually a, typically a set that you want to run out of, a little right. bit bigger set. When you look at what the league standard is, which is 11 personnel, which is your three wide receivers, one back, one back, and, one a, tight end. and a tight yep. end, um, they're at 46%, which is one of the lower amounts in the league. Um, and that's 493 plays out of that set. Now, that's not a crazy low number by any means. There's still 493 plays where they had three wide receivers out there. Right. Um, to hear to hear to be lower one of the lower teams in the league, but still get 500 snaps right. with three three wide receivers on the team is is still a so hefty number. To give you context on where the other teams are, Chargers are at the top of that list with 81 percent of their plays being 799 plays out of three receiver sets last year oh geez that's and a lot zona being the lowest at 40 percent with two with 426 plays out of so they're you know just a couple of spots ahead of where arizona was um with 426 plays and they they came in 493 but that is a pretty for that context that's a pretty 350 more snaps with three wide receivers on the field for the chargers i mean that's and the chargers serious. were very high in the in regard to they're the highest, and they were. There was only a couple of teams that were there, and then the rest of the. Fall and I'm in sure there. with an offense led by Philip Rivers, you have more snaps to go around, and you got a running team. Right. Running team would led by Blake Bortles. You probably have less total snaps if you look at that too. So I can right. I, I can see that. So 
to further go down the personnel, we, we, we gave you the 12 personnel, which is, you know, two tight ends, sets, bigger sets. Um, and then they were top three and 13 personnel, which is three tight ends, even bigger set. So this is all more leaning towards. That's that Tom Coughlin, that, man. That's that what they're going to do. They're going to run gonna... the ball, Doug Marone mm-hmm. uh, kind of deal. So that's 110 plays in that. Uh, the average of the rest of the league. Um, oh, no, sorry. Excuse me. 11% on, on 13 personnel. Uh, but then kind of where they make up the difference is, is they were top three and four wide receiver sets. So they are running some bigger sets and they're a little lower in the three set, which we've said, you know, 500 still isn't a, you know, an amount where you're like, oh, they're not even going to have three wide receivers on the field. Right. Um, but in the four wide receiver sets, they're at 10%, which is 110 plays. The rest of the average of the league is at 2% in that set. So there's like basic, there's three three teams up there with like that or there's two teams that were higher than them and they were basically at 11 and 12 percent so they're pretty much at the top of the totem pole kind of making up for some of that uh three wide receiver set with the extra fourth wide receiver here gotcha um so just to kind of show you where they're at personnel wise and their groupings and all that other stuff before we really uh dive into nothing's changed coaching staff wise nothing's changed coaching staff wise and obviously you can things can change from year to year. Nothing's set in stone. Well, that this what, is going to happen again. What may have changed is you assume that you're coming back into this season now with a little bit more confidence in your quarterback after Blake Bortles gets drug along by the defense and running game all year long, starts to find some confidence through the playoffs, gets some wins, and then goes out there and throws two picks in the, in the preseason game week three. But, you know, that the idea is that maybe that – Yes, you're going to lean on what got you to the playoffs last year, which was great, best defense in the league, and obviously turnovers are fluky, but you, you made them, and you made them all day long. And then best running game, one of the best running games in the league. So I'm just saying that more, maybe one of the things that changes coming to this year is like, all right, well, maybe we got a little bit more quarterback stability than we had last year. Because last year it was maybe I mean, Blake In the Bortle. beginning of the preseason, they got benched. Last year. And they were Yeah. Right. That's what and I'm saying. So they weren't even sure – like we had him in a, in a two QB league and we he gets were benched and we're like, boots. oh shit! Like, <laughs> yeah, what are we gonna do without Blake Bortles here right. in our starting lineup? Because say what you want about him on the actual football field for fantasy football, he's pretty solid. Yeah, um, those legs so, keep it consistent. So it's definitely you know he's definitely on more of a confidence high coming into this season. And then you know like Casey said, did a bunch of research trying to figure out what to think about the fallout of Marquise Lee that gruesome knee injury. It's like. One thing I came away with is looking at like all the amount of drops that he dealt with with his receivers. I, I came away feeling kind of sorry for Bortles from last year. Yeah, like, he definitely, when you look at the drops throughout all these guys, there's definitely a good bit left on the field. Yeah, especially in, help him. in deep ball situations. Right. So like with, with balls, uh, passes 20 plus yards down the field, Blake was 16th in the league with 59 attempts, 19th in completions with 17. But he was first in the league with the amount of balls dropped on those passes with six. So if they if they cut out some of those drops on those balls downfield, he could be pushing to be in the top ten of successful passers down the field, which is yeah. actually pretty impressive. Right. Um, he doesn't have like a great deep ball, but he's got a nice touch. If it's a soft, right. if it needs a soft touch, he's got that. Right. And when you look at the breakdown of where his balls go on PFF, those deeper outer throws are some of the higher percentage throws that he has on his entire breakdown. Yeah. He also loves the middle of the field, for sure, in the shorter areas, um, which is kind of what let, like, we did a lot of research into into what's going on in the slot for this team. Right. Just to try to make heads or tails of, of where these roles were going to be and who was going to be playing kind of what and role. And, it's, and again, I came away with not a ton of answers for you guys, um, but... I mean, we got an answer. I mean, I think it's I think it's Keelan Cole here is the biggest beneficiary. So, I think this ends up with leaving Keelan Cole with the biggest uh, solidified role. Maybe I don't even know if I want to go that far, but it, I think it just it allows him to kind of blossom into a wide receiver one for this team. Um, and being maybe that wide receiver two area for your fantasy team. And then with wide receiver one weeks, right? Um, we see this guy. He has got a great deal of quickness. He's got crispy routes. He's a solid ball tracker, um, knows how to separate at the top of routes. Um, it's uncanny. Like you, th- that cornerback can be with him the whole time. I mean, he only ran a four six four, but right, it seems but, a lot but, faster than that. But when that, when like you watch the him into that tape, route, there's no four six there. Right. It's a lot faster than that. And, and when he gets to the top of that route, 
He just has that uncanny ability like some receivers do just to be able to pull away right. at the last second and be pretty much wide open. It's it's very impressive. Right. And I, so I, I think he's... Uh, he works the middle of the field very, right. really well. No fear there. I think he's a really tough assignment for, for really any team. Um, and the pile on top of that... Uh, you can kind of move them all over the scheme and all over the, or scheme them all over the field, move them in different positions, which is why when you look at the uh, slot percentages of what was going on, it was basically him and Hearns playing the slot when one or the other one wasn't in there. Um, and, and they were around in the middle of the pack in target percentage in the slot through the entire NFL, depending on kind of which guy was playing. And you have to sort um, by different snap amounts on, on the uh, when they were on the field, because obviously Hearns, you know, played uh, was a starter for more games than Keelan Cole was. Right. So and when didn't he was play a starter, all the games either. Right. And then when he wasn't starting, Keelan Cole was in there. And the, so when you right. sort these things, they have their their fifteenth and I think eighteenth in uh, target percentage from the slot. And I don't think any other team had um, uh, two players in the top twenty of slot percentage targets. Uh, Miami was was right there. Right. I think they were right outside. You would it, think they would be right. But other than that, so they may not run a ton of three wide receiver sets as compared to the rest of the league, but they like targeting the slot when um, when available. And then when you saw uh, Marquise Lee or uh, Westbrook go into that slot, those guys were uh, pretty heavily targeted. I think it's like 23 or 24 percent. Um, let me check here. Well, that's an interesting perspective because, like you said, they got they're on the lower end of the to- totem pole of three wide receiver slot s- sets. But when they do run three wide receivers out there, they're in the higher end of the NFL as far as w- actually t- when they do bring a third wide receiver in there, they're going to throw it to him almost more than anybody else. Right, and which takes you back to the let's play it safe with Bortles type passes so there would because you would expect the slot receiver having a safer easier closer average depth of target for the quarterback to give him an accurate pass which we know Bortles likes at short and over the middle to Marky Slee most likely um, Blake likes the low a dot he loves a low a dot or, <laughs> right. a, ch- or a chuck it downfield right you know? right so when you move uh, Lee or DD into the into the slot there Lee had 56 snaps in the slot DD had 23 snaps in the slot and the target percentage then grows from um, 17.3% um, to for Hearns to 23.2 for Lee and 39.1 for Didi. So, like I said, even though those players don't play a ton in the slot... Um, when they are when there. They w- when they were there, they were getting the look from Bortles, and I would imagine those are the situations where you were in a down and distance where you needed to pick up a first down or you needed to, you know... You needed to pick something up, so you were moving those players into the slot to get to gain the mismatch, and then you were targeting uh, those players in that mismatched area. So, yeah. Well, to take it back to, to a little bit more here on Keelan and why I feel like he's a, the best, I guess, replacement for Marquise Lee is like looking at what what happened with those two players last year. It's almost like Keelan did some of the same things but better. Um, so when you look at like yards after the catch, which Marquise Lee is strong in, he had. He was, I guess, 30th in the league with 287 yards, which is only, sorry, 295 yards, which is only seven yards more than what Keelan Cole had. But Marquise Lee had 14 more catches. So Keelan Cole, right there, that tells me he's a little bit better after the catch. He's a little faster, seems like, anyway, on right. the field. And he's Well, he's, and just to go back to separating at the top of routes when he's catching the ball... He's, right, he's more a, open. Right, he's a little more open at the top of that route. Right, and then we talked about the downfield passing. Um, so targets over twenty yards or more. He was tied with Marquise Lee. This is Keelan Cole. Each had sixteen targets of twenty more yards down the field. Right. Lee only caught one of those passes. Keelan Cole caught almost half of them with seven. Seven, yeah. So he's crushing the downfield pass compared to what Marquise Lee was doing. He's just as good after the catch. He's playing, he had 166 snaps out of the slot, and then the rest of that's out wide. Right. Like, when you watch these games, you have to, like, pause it, if, if, especially if you're watching the cut-up version. you got to pause it pre-snap just to try and figure out where everybody is because it is not the same on any play, really, mm-hmm. which makes this all difficult because they do so many different variations right. of all these players. And, and I guess that was my biggest takeaway is that I, I didn't come away with n- – knowing a real answer here a lot of teams it's pretty 
kind of easy to say, all right, well, this guy's gone and now here's what's about to happen. It's easy to interchange these pieces and right. say, all right, this guy's coming over here. Now this is going to be his duty. This can be his duty. This can be his duty. duty. But I think um, one thing with this team is you have so many interchangeable pieces and they all have speed. It's like right. you got uh, Moncrief, who's a 4-4 guy. You got Didi, who's a 4-4 guy. You have uh, Keelan Cole, who's a 4-6 guy, but definitely not a 4-6 guy on the field. Right. Like their speed and they can all move in and out of the slot right. interchangeably. Um, so I think this is going to be a, an offense that is extremely versatile. And there's there's so many different things you can do. But I, I, I think the guy who comes away with the most versatility and, and like Jay Wayne said, the most upside from maybe capitalizing on that wide receiver one area that Lee owned is most likely Keelan Cole for me and uh, Jay Wayne. Absolutely. Well, I think that, you know, obviously you guys really broke down a lot of numbers there. I think a lot of people were thinking Keelan Cole either way. Um, but I just since we had a lot of numbers, I was sitting here playing with some while you guys were talking. If you take Lee's 23% target percentage when he's in the, in the, in the slot by the 490-something targets that they – or by the 490-something snaps that they played three wide receivers, that's 97 snaps. That's 97 targets for the slot guy just out of the three wide receiver set. And 97 targets doesn't sound like a ton, but – a lot has been made how like the Miami Dolphins were the only team last year to have two guys over like 107 or eight targets or something on the mm -hmm. same team. So if you're talking, we're trying to make some figure up, figure out what's going on here as far as like fantasy. I think most people would say the based on what Keelan Cole did last year and the fact that it was already kind of Marky Slee and Keelan Cole in the reports that they were the starters. Obviously, well, to, be, to be fair, Westbrook was banged up, core for, injury for, a, for the first ten weeks. Yeah. All right. So, Flash in the preseason for sure. So, I, all right. So, that's fair. To be fair to him, he was banged up and he really came on strong at the end of he last did. year. It was awesome. But, so, what's the bad? Obviously, the bad news for the Jags is Marquis Lee's out. Right. The good news is, for a fantasy perspective, is you got a little bit more. You get, I think, what is what we're trying to put together here is between Moncrief, Lee, and Didi or, or Cole, then, you know, or Moncrief, Cole, and Westbrook that those targets probably filtered through those three guys, it looks like. Right. So you're Keelan Cole. You like him a little bit more. But as far as everybody else, when Marquise Lee was on the field, it was Marquise Lee, and maybe Keelan Cole was going to be fantasy relevant, deep flex spot, maybe. But now right. it's like, all right, well, well, we, I think Cole's pretty much a given so, for fantasy relevance. And then maybe even Keelan, Didi or Moncrief, one or the other, if they establish themselves and you can see a picture out of the first two or three weeks of the season – yeah. I can see. So what was what, with Keelan Cole, and we talked about him a little bit way prior to this, about how it was a nice kind of flyer to take and because we really liked what you saw because there was a lot, some big play aspects from him. Well, you told people about him last preseason, right. last year, and for, then we did another video where we went pretty hard in the paint for him to tell you to star him up and then to pick him up. And So if you've been listening to us for a while, you already got Keelan Cole down on right. the bottom of your but roster. In, in, these, in, in this year's startups, you know, I liked him as, taking a, as a guy on a flyer who had a, a tremendous amount of upside, and I think now even more, like you're, you're ending up paying more for him, obviously, now right. because oh, there's yeah. one less guy, no but... No he's I, I what I was saying when I was kind of giving you my synopsis of why I think he could be that we wide receiver one is just, he's he's just a, a fantastic lottery ticket out of any of these players on this team like he just to me just poses the most um, like season winning potential for any of these guys in, in my opinion just because of all the things that that we mentioned right. there of all the, the ability I, to play out of the he's slot. got game breaking abilities right yeah. crushes it downfield. And, uh, you know, so we'll kind of see how that, that pans out.